here we go for another tech roundup. This week's been a lot of deep diving into a lot of fresh AI tech and news, and there's a ton to unpack. From big open AI roadmap forecasts, where AGI is apparently on the roadmap now, and dramatic pivot for profit status from Meta's restructuring shakeups and record breaking financial deals, it's been a whirlwind. I've also looked at how companies are realizing ROI from their generative AI tools, along with some fascinating insights into the improving AI agents, smart agent design, and how leadership is evolving in the face of tech disruption. So a lot of big news with OpenAI this week. Live stream where they talked about recapitalization, so they had to change from a not-for-profit to a for-profit company. They have a public benefit corporation that now manages a, or owns a large stake of the profit company. That profit company now has access to more investments from Citibank, which was is a Japanese bank, I believe, who had investment that needed to be closed out by the end of this year on the contingency that they were a for-profit company. They also needed to move to this state because they need so much more capital to be able to fund all these AI factories to be able to deliver the AI and the gains that they're actually talking about. They also shared an internal roadmap saying that by so September 2026, we should have a intern level research agent that can work on self-improving AI on its own. By 2028, we should have self-replicating AI agents that can research on their own and improve themselves effectively. If they made some better deals with Microsoft after their for-profit structuring, we now know that Microsoft's stake in AI is currently worth about $123 billion, where they made a $1 billion investment, and I don't know what they've done in the time since then. But it is going to be an intelligence explosion. Once we start getting AIs that can research new AI methodologies or improvements to AIs faster than what humans can do, it will start getting that improvement. Then once it gets beyond what we can do, it will explode. Problems with Meta as well. There's two videos that dug into the big internal shifts. One was about 600 roles that were being let go from the FAIR team, so the Facebook AI research team, and then pivoting towards what they're now calling Super Intelligence Lab, where Alexander Wang, which we've talked about before, is now the CTO or CEO. He heads that up anyway. A lot of shifts happening there. I don't know why it's going from one to the other, but there's probably a lot of AI teams in the business inside of Meta, and they're just consolidating how it looks like. On the financial front also, Oracle made headlines with a $38 billion deal to boost data centers powering OpenAI, thinking of turning its compute power into the oil fields of the AI era. And that also is on the news of Google and Anthropic expand, expanding their TPU resources, and even Satya Nadella saying that AI remains at the core of Microsoft's future. Again, giant shifts in the industry, all heading towards one direction, huge investment, huge AI processing is needed to support it all, and it's just gonna keep going that way. I don't know how many more jobs this is employing in those certain areas for data centers, electricians, fire management, and plumbing, and whatever else there is, but there's shitloads of stuff happening there. NVIDIA also made a deal with Nokia that they're gonna be providing the mobile devices or software for a certain type of AI that hasn't been running yet. And again, their stock skyrocketed too. So NVIDIA just throwing money around, getting partnerships and deals with people to then have more of their own customers be using their services. Real world AI and scaled AI deployments. Switching gears to a very data driven video that caught my eye, I delved into companies who are moving well beyond pilot projects into full scale AI deployments that are actually generating a positive ROI. This isn't just about the hype. Surveys and case studies are showing tangible productivity gains and revenue impacts. The video broke down comparison between image and video generation tools, highlighting how different industries are benefiting from that. So there's all these very niche specific marketing tools that are using these video and image generation tools. Even Adobe is getting into it. So then they can just generate the same sort of content, taking away the prompt magic away from people so you can get a better outcome. That's really what it comes down to. Self-improving AI and building more effective agents. On the technical innovation side, two insightful videos explored the world of AI agents. One video dove into self-improving AI, a concept where agents can actually rewrite their own code. It covered everything from the theoretical risks of an intelligence explosion to the practical integrations. The so problem with this is it's maybe run away from us and we don't know what it's going to be doing, but it is the goal that it does improve itself. This is like the AI making AI now. It's what you've seen in the movies. I'm not going to get to that level though, obviously. In another in-depth 
discussion covered strategies for building smarter, more effective agents using like the Claude Agent SDK and multi-agent architectures. They go into a lot of technical details in these videos. This is more for me to learning about the trade and the skill of what we're actually doing rather than just the news. But Anthropic and OpenAI do post some great videos about agents and things like that. The other really detailed ones were the AI engineer, if anyone looks at that series. I haven't seen them for a couple of weeks actually, so I might have to look back into them. They've come off my suggestions. Leadership, entrepreneurship, and the AI revolution. Wrapping up this week, I tuned into an engaging conversation with Ben Horowitz. He drew parallels between the AI revolution and earlier tech shifts, comparing AI to the earlier days of the internet, and said that entrepreneurs need to thrive in this era of chaos. There's so many things changing. It's very quick to get to market. If you can do something, you may do well. His advice on embracing doubt and making tough decisions is particularly resonant in our rapidly evolving tech landscape. This is a powerful reminder that while the tech itself is transformative, the human element and of leadership remains the key to scaling innovation. Well, you need to be a leader, you need to be able to drive the business and have a direction moving forward. Just having AI for the sake of AI doesn't do anything. Unless you're providing value to your clients, your end users, whoever is gonna end up using the product that you're building, or your internal staff, whatever it may be, no point. Everyone's doing this to have a business that generates income or revenue and profit. Otherwise, why would you do it? You're not a charity, not a government department. So having the ability to make decisions quickly while things change constantly, as well as understanding the potential risks and knowing what the end may be is something that's very important, especially in this time where everything is up in the air and constantly changing. So that's it for this week's roundup. I didn't actually watch this much stuff this week, but the open AI news seemed to dominate the last couple of days of information besides just having like general product updates on things that we don't care about really. We saw OpenAI push the envelope with bold roadmap predictions and corporate pivots, while Meta's restructuring poses tough questions about the future of open research. Financial moves like Oracle's mega deal illustrate the new economic reality of AI, and real-world ROI is proving that these investments aren't just theoretical, plus the advances in self-improving and effective AI agents open up a bright future. We're reminded that navigating this fast-paced evolution requires both savvy and decisive resilient leadership. Thank you for watching. Open AI news, again, biggest thing that happened this week. But as usual, let me know your thoughts in the comments, anything you want to discuss. Otherwise, good luck keeping up with everything next week.